Hello guys, welcome to Houdini Made Simple. In this last video of the basic course, I'll be covering the main concepts and settings to know when rendering in Karma. You'll learn things like setting up your file name, camera, resolution, and sampling to control the quality of your final render. Let's dive in. Okay guys, so we just finished last lesson setting up the depth of field for the camera. In this lesson, we are gonna focus on rendering the whole sequence. I want this 72 frames rendered into a image sequence. So then we can work on compositing. Uh, this is gonna be the last lesson of this course. So let's go and move on. So we're gonna go back into Solaris. And once inside the LobNet, we need to create basically two nodes to render the whole sequence. And we can create the two nodes uh, one by one, or we can just type Karma. And this is gonna give us the two nodes we need to one to set up the render settings and the second one to do the actual render. So I'm gonna go ahead, type Karma, and then connect the Karma render settings into the node tree. And with the first node, the Karma render settings, we're gonna be controlling a lot of things uh, like camera, resolution, sampling, uh, so we can set up and, and get a clean render. And then we're gonna use the USD uh, render rob to actually write this sequence to disk. So let's go over the basic parameters that you need to understand in order to render this whole sequence. As you can see, we have many tabs, many options in the render setting nodes, but for now we just need to focus on the very basics so we can uh, actually render the, this whole sequence. So let's start with the output picture, super important. This is gonna define the name and location of the file you're gonna be rendering. In this case, we have many variables on here on the name. Heap is referring to the location of your Houdini file. Then it's going to create a folder called render. And then we have for the actual name of the file, we have a few variables. The first one is going to be dollar heap name. That's going to be referring to the actual name of the Houdini file. In this case, it's called lesson seven. Then we have dollar OS that is referring the name of the node in this case it's called karma render settings and then we have dollar f4 that's gonna give us how many numbers in this case four we use for the frame so if we are rendering frame number one it's gonna be zero 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 one and lastly we have the exr that's gonna be the format of the file so in this case i don't want to include the heap name on my file so i'm just gonna uh, replace this and create a folder called dollar os so it's gonna have basically the name of the node and then the render is gonna be inside that folder so since we're gonna be using this uh, node to name the file i'm just gonna go over here and just rename this to asteroids render so we have a proper naming here i'm gonna select the camera now it's already matching but always make sure that you have the, the, the right camera uh, here on the resolution we can set up the resolution by default it's already linked to the camera so we have the right resolution but you can set here manually which resolution you want in this case we're just gonna go back and leave it as it is so on engine settings we have two options one is the cpu engine the other one is the xpu remember the xpu is using not only the cpu but also your graphic card to, to create a, a render. Uh, the main difference I would say is that the CPU engine is a bit more stable and usually is more compatible with uh, some of the Houdini features. So you can use a lot of times the XPU just to uh, work on your look development, like quick preview, and then for the final production, you can switch up to CPU, but it's up to you, they're both okay. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use the CPU engine so we can also talk a bit more about uh, how the samples work. As you can see, we have two kind of samples. We have the primary samples and the secondary samples. The main thing to understand is that samples control the quality of the final render, but the more samples you have, uh, the more time the camera and the render engine is gonna look into each pixel, but at the same time, it's gonna take more time to render. So for the primary samples, Karma is going to send rays out from the camera to the scene to start building every pixel of the image. And of course, the more samples you have, the more 
rays you're gonna send and the better quality and less noisy is gonna be the the final output and once these primary rays hit the surface of an object they're gonna be sending secondary rays uh, out to the lights on the scene to work and solve the diffuse, the reflections, the refraction. So basically, the primary rays are going to be in charge of controlling the quality of the overall image, and the secondary rays are going to be affecting more the indirect lighting, reflection, and refractions, among other things. So we're just going to take a look how the render is looking with all the samples by default and then if we need to go up on primary samples or maybe secondary samples then we can start going up on those at the same time we want to go into the camera effects we want to keep enable the pop field because we do want to work with the pop field but we're just going to turn off motion blur for now and let's go and take a look so in order to test how this is looking and see if we need more samples, we can go into the UEC render prop. This is all linked to the camera render settings. And we just gonna hit render to end play so we can take a look. This is gonna take a few minutes or seconds depending on your computer. So let's wait for a second and then we can share the result. So this is the first a render and as you can see it's a bit noisy over here and not too sharp uh, especially when you work with the pop fill uh, you're gonna run into these kind of noisy images so we are gonna have to go up on a uh, quality on the primary sample to try to get sharper edges and less noisy image so let's try to take this to maybe four times what we have now so I'm gonna try to multiply this by four. We can do it manually or just multiply by four. And we're gonna have 36 uh, sample. And now we can take another test to see if we clean the noise enough or not. So I'm gonna just reopen the end play and take a look how this is looking. As you can see, it's now it's just finished and it's a bit cleaner, but I feel still, especially because of the depth of field, it's not sharp enough and we have still some noise, but the before and after it is already looking a bit better. So I'm going to go up uh, even more. I'm going to minimize this, go over here. I'm going to break the connection and I'm going to go maybe uh, 64 samples and take another test to see how this is looking. I'm going to reopen the end play. And again, remember the more samples you go up, it's going to take more time to render but sometimes it's worth it so you just have to uh, see how much do you need so now we just finished with the render and now it is looking even cleaner and i think at this point this is going to be good enough for for our shot so i'm going to leave it as it is now in 64 primary samples and still it's pretty fast the first one took seven seconds the second one took eight seconds and the third one to 12 seconds so this is a really a uh, basic scene but of course the more object reflection refraction you have it's gonna take more time uh, but for now it's gonna be good enough for us so i'm gonna set up the rest of the parameters to render the whole sequence now that i'm happy with the end result so one note before we move on although it's not the goal of this video to go in depth with Karma render settings. I'm going to be doing a video about that soon. It's important to understand that the secondary samples, uh, they're going to be affecting more the diffuse component, the reflection, refraction, even, even the volume quality when you render. In this case, we don't have refractions and volume, so we are not tweaking them too much. Uh, and just to understand that uh, over here, the mean secondary samples and max secondary samples is a value that is multiplied with the limits over here. So uh, just be aware of that, uh, especially if you have a scene with a lot of refractions or reflections, uh, tweaking these values, or maybe even here, is going to be important to get a nice quality, nice refraction and reflections. So having said that, I think we are ready to render the whole sequence. You want to select the render prop. In this case, we are not going to render to end play. We already checked and we are happy with the quality. So we are just going to go over here and switch this to a specific frame range. So we can render from the first to the last frame of the sequence. And once we are ready, we can click on render to disk. 
and the render is going to start. A window should pop up. Here I have my, my window. This is going to be telling us the progress of the render. So now we have to wait. Okay, guys, so we just finished rendering the whole sequence. Uh, it took about 15 minutes to render every frame, so not too bad. Uh, so once we finish, we can check how the sequence is looking. If you have an image sequence play, in this case I have the PD player, so I can hit play and check how the all the asteroids they are moving slowly. But if you don't have any sequence player, you can go to the object level, create a COP network, and inside the COP network, we want to create a file node. And then on the file name, we can go and bring the asteroid render. And once we do that, we can go into the composite view. And this is going to allow us to scroll through the timeline and see how the asteroids are moving. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video on basic render settings in Karma. This was the last video of the basic course for Houdini. The idea was to create a simple project and through the process learn some basic tools, workflows and concepts. So thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. It really helps to support the channel and I will see you on the next one.